Hi, this is Mato. In this video, I will show you a very instructive chess game. This is the game between Svetozar Gligoric and Paul Keres that was played in Zagreb in 1958. Zagreb is the capital city of Croatia. This was the match between Yugoslavia and Soviet Union. And the theme is hanging pawns. Let's go straight to the position. White pawns on c4 and d4 square are known as the hanging pawns. Hanging pawns can be liability if the player who has them loses the initiative. On the positive, they give white space. They control b5, c5, d5 and e5. And they also give white dynamic potential. Let's see how the game started. Gligoric had white pieces and he started with d4. Keres played knight to f6. c4, e6, knight to c3, and bishop to b4. And we have Nimso in the end defense. e3, c5, black attacks the center, bishop to d3, b6, Knight to f3, bishop to b7, white castled kingside, so did black, bishop to d2, pawn takes pawn on d4, e takes on d4, black played d5, and white captured with c pawn. If pawn takes pawn, then bishop on b7 is blocked by its own pawn. So Keres captured knight on c3 with bishop, pawn takes bishop, and now Keres captured pawn with queen. If instead he captured with pawn, we would have this continuation, bishop to g5, pinning knight, queen to d6, bishop takes knight, queen takes bishop, knight to e5 and white is standing better. So in the game we have queen takes pawn on d5. It is white to move. Gligoric in his annotations said that he was considering a4 and rook to e1 and he didn't like any of these. So he played c4. He decided to play with hanging pawns. Pawn is attacking queen, so queen to d6, bishop to c3, knight from b to d7, rook to e1, placing rook on semi-open file, rook from a to c8, and now h3, that is preventing knight to g4, rook from f to d8. There is a wild variation and that is knight to d5. If knight to d5, then we would have this continuation. Pawn takes knight, rook takes on c3, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, knight to g5, e6 is under pressure, h7 is under pressure. After queen to f4, Probably bishop takes on h7 and comes back to e4, something like that. Okay, in the game, black decided to go for safer continuation, and Gligoric played rook to e3. From here, rook protects, but also attacks. It may go to g3 to attack the king. And knight to h5. Let's go back. Black would love to play b5. In some other games, that's what happened. b5 is played. Here it doesn't work. If b5, then bishop to a5 will be played, and c5 may come. But if pawn takes pawn, then bishop takes rook. Pawn takes bishop, bishop takes knight, 
knight takes bishop, queen takes pawn, and white is better. Also, instead of bishop to a5, it is possible to play immediately c5. If queen goes to c7, to prevent bishop from coming to a5, then queen to d2, and again, white is better. Perhaps knight to f8 would be a good continuation, considering what happened in the game. Black wanted to play more ambitious chess, he played knight to h5, knight would love to come to f4. And uh, this is now critical position of the game. It is white to move. And Gligoric played d5. So now both bishops are aiming at the king. They are attacking g7 and h7 pawn. And knight to c5 was played. That is attacking bishop on d3, very dangerous bishop. In his annotations, Gligoric said that in this position he was considering bishop sacrifice on h7. Then king takes, knight to g5 check. King to g6, knight takes on f7, king takes knight, check, king to g8, bishop takes pawn, king takes bishop, check, queen takes rook, pawn takes queen. But in the end, he decided to go for the safer option, knight to g5. Bishop and knight are attacking h7, queen is attacking knight. g6, bishop to e2, that is bishop takes knight, knight to g7, queen to d4, Threat is queen takes knight on g7 checkmate. If knight goes to f5, there is checkmate just like that. That's why Keres protected the knight with queen. Now queen to h4. That is queen takes pawn on h7 checkmate. h5. And Gligorit said that he considered the g4 and he didn't like it because he actually can take that pawn because of knight to f5. So in this position Gligoric played bishop to g4. Bishop is attacking pawn on a6 and f5 was played. Bishop is attacked. And how would you continue this position? Gligoric captured with knight on a6, knight from g takes on a6, and pawn takes knight. That is e7, forking rook and queen. If knight takes on a6, is that good? Then rook takes knight. If pawn takes bishop, then check. King to f7, check, king to e8, check, queen to e7 and check, mate. In the game, instead of taking, rook to e8 was played. And now Gligoric continued destruction of the pawns on the king side. Bishop takes on h5, and if Pawn takes bishop, what happens then? You would have rook to g3, check. King to h7, check. Queen blocks, check. Queen blocks, checkmate. So, Keres played queen to h6. Queen to f6 was played. 
and how should black continue now? If queen takes bishop, is that good? If queen takes on h5, that is checkmate, just like that, for example. What about if pawn takes? If pawn takes, then queen to f7 checkmate. In time trouble, so black was losing on time. He played f4 and he was checkmated just like that. So in this game we have seen that hanging pawns were weapons in hands of Gligorich. And that is all. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I wish you good luck with your chess. And bye for now.